Welcome in to another episode of the Calcio Connection podcast. We are connecting with you, Italian football fans from all over the world. I wish we were connecting under better circumstances in this one. Um, very, very painful international break. I didn't have a good feeling heading into this playoff. I did not have a good feeling about the Azzurri actually qualifying for this World Cup. You know, the first leg... Uh, I did think Italy would win the first leg against North Macedonia and likely having to go up against Portugal in Portugal. I knew that'd be incredibly difficult. So I didn't have my hopes up for qualification. And I know Jerry Mancini didn't either. I'm Alex Dono, by the way. But um, I, I didn't expect to go out to North Macedonia. And Jerry, I, I figured we did a pre-game episode uh, for this on Wednesday before the game on Thursday. And you know, I did predict that it would, it would be like pulling teeth, right? A lot of the issues that Italy had, having trouble breaking down the Macedonia defense, having trouble scoring goals. I had a bad feeling that it would come down to probably a late game winner for Italy or maybe even extra time, maybe even penalty kicks. But uh, I, I didn't think they would actually give up a decisive goal in regulation the way that they did in Palermo, sw- scored by a former Palermo player, by the way, just to add more irony and insult to injury. So here we are, pain and suffering. Second straight World Cup. No World Cup in 2018. No World Cup in 2020-22. This is a really, really sad time for the men in blue. How are you, Jerry? I, I love how I just, I just set up how miserable life is for any Italian football fan. Like, Jerry, how are you doing, sir? <laughs> and, and I know Jerry has been dealing with Ciro Immobile, uh, you know, hate for the last couple of days. You've been trying to defend the guy. It, listen, my take, um, like, I, I, I understand, Jerry, you being kind of annoyed by how just people single out Ciro and blame him for everything. Um, he was certainly part of the problem on uh, on thursday but you you don't have to no one has to cherry pick one player there were a ton of problems when you put 32 shots attempted on goal and with the amount of misses that berardi had for example who i thought was just so incredibly wasteful including missing an open net um cheeto wasn't good i certainly can't defend him but uh, i'm not going to put all of it on him no i i just think that this team needed it. What's up, Mario? Yo, yo, yo. Look at that. Let me go in the background for a sec. Looking good, man. What's it called? Um, okay. He's, he, he's, he's partial to blame. I absolutely agree that he had chances, and, and, and I think it's the part of it is just the confidence level is just not there with Cheeto anymore. Like you see in the second half, he makes the run down the left side. And normally with Lazio, he'll, he would make that cut inside the box and try to cause a penalty or, or create a chance. But for for Cheeto, he's just not the same player with Italy. And I think that a lot of that has to do with that. Italy's never had a, a, a good plan B to kind of help them with, um, what do you call it, having like a, another plan to help them, right? So this is – Mario's killing me. But um, I, I would have preferred to have Mario Balotelli called up as opposed to Joe Pedro. Um, I don't know. I think that Joe Pedro has no no part being in this team. I think that's the only selection I didn't like that Mancini made. I'm not going to question as to why certain players were out of the lineup, why 10 players were out. I, I think a lot of that has to do with COVID, injuries like Skamaka. Um, it seems as if Roberto Mancini had his hands tied in certain situations, certain players, and, and and he rolled the dice with what he saw was best inside the uh, the dressing room, right? In training, he sees who's fit, who's in form. I, I just laugh because a lot of people now act like they would have done better than what he would have done. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's easier said than done because what – Mancini has done in the last what two or four years has been remarkable and I don't know any other manager who would have done what he's been able to I think the only thing you could probably question about what Mancini has done is not using enough youth players and, and, right. and maybe changing it up in the last five to seven matches after the Euros were done and and, and, and that's that's my primary critique because I thought that Mancini, and you see this a lot with Italian managers. Italian managers are very stubborn, and they can be very superstitious. 
and they don't like to tinker very much. Sometimes it's a good thing because sometimes stability continuity is good. Other times, and I think in the case of Mancini, um, he really valued the continuity coming out of the Euros. And I and I even get it. It wasn't the same squad, right? Because no, no Chiesa, no Spinazzola. So it's not as if he had all of his top players even from the Euro and there were other guys that were injured. But still, like I think he wanted to make the squad as much of a carbon copy as the one that won the Euro as possible. And he ended up just being a little bit too superstitious, a little bit too stubborn, and a little bit too conservative. And I think that's got to be part of, of the demise here. And I, and I pre- Jerry, I appreciate what you said about, you know, overall. I mean, obviously, um, Mancini has made this team better uh, than that loser Ventura did, who was just an absolute joke and a disgrace. But, you know, I can understand. I want to bring Mario Galliano in on this as well. Um, I also understand why people are, are talking about the possibility that this could be the end of the line for Mancini. And I know he has gotten basically an endorsement from the Federation that they're not going to sack him. But I think it's very possible that he might decide to resign and maybe go back to the club level. And there was also a, a lot of chatter that um, that he would have made kind of his last order of business for Italy would have been if they had qualified the Qatar World Cup and he would have stepped away after then anyway so now not even qualifying for that um i just say it might be time for him to turn the page and it's not even just about italy turning the page but failing to qualify for a world cup it might be time for him to turn the page on his career um i don't know how much of the news is real and how much of it is bs but i'm reading headlines about him maybe being a candidate for manchester united maybe being a candidate for PSG. And again, I don't know how true those rumors are, but I, he's going to have some options. If he wants to go back to the club level, he's going to have some options there. Good afternoon, Mario. How you doing, sir? Oh, I think you're muted, man. I see. I see you. Great. I just can't hear you. <laughs> hey, okay, cool. here, here we go. He here we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just finished repping some games. I'm really nice. glad I didn't watch that Italy game. I'm so glad I forgot that they were playing. I'm jealous. How, how could you so, like you call yourself a fan? How do you forget that they were playing? I I was at work and I started a <laughs> hey. job, so it's like kind of weird. Okay, okay. Um, but it's I love Mancini. I've been his biggest fan since the first time since as a player. But you cannot not qualify for the World Cup. It's yeah, it's abominable, and the way he did it too. It's not like he lost to Portugal three times in a row, home and away, and then went to Russia, lost there. You know, respectable teams that are are, are in contention, actually in contention for the World Cup. He tied with Bulgaria. He tied with nobody. He tied with stupid teams that he has that we have no business keeping a close game with, at the very least. You know, and then Macedonia on top of it in Palermo, which I guaranteed the win. On top of it, I was so freaking, uh, I was so confident going to this game that we were going to win. We had everything working for us. We don't lose in Palermo. Nobody loses yeah. in Palermo. Not even Palermo loses in Palermo. <laughs> Is we that true? I Palermo. haven't followed them since they've been in like City at E or whatever they're in now. No, they, they still lose in Palermo, but that's not the point. Uh, <laughs> but I was talking with uh, with Sharma and Mo on, on, our, on Inter Worldwide last week, and I said, we need Dybala because there's Palermo DNA. If if he comes, guaranteed trophies left and right. What happens? You said it earlier. Tchaikovsky, ex Palermo player in Palermo. Mm-hmm. Palermo DNA right there. It, it's it. You can't make this shit up. If it was Goran Panda, if it was if it was, if anybody else, they're missing that goal. I guarantee it. They're missing that goal. But because he played for Palermo in Palermo, the stars aligned in Macedonia. Uh, they're not even a freaking country to me. <laughs> That's my Greekness. They're not even a country. They shouldn't wow. have even been in this. Qualifies because they beat Italy on some some nonsense. So I'm I'm pissed off. Glad I didn't watch the game because I probably would have broke my phone, my computer, my my TV, whatever the hell I was watching on at the yeah. time. Because that's bullshit. Mancini, I love him, but he didn't get the job done. And the sad part is, is I don't know who's who can do a better job after after he came in. Like, who, what Italian manager is going to walk in and do a better job than Mancini and win the world a Euro? You know. We, we buy him, we, we brought him in to put the best 11 players on the field and win, and he 
puts the best 11 players on and it just wasn't good enough because he doesn't have the tactical side of it. I, I say it all the time. He's, he's the best manager at just picking players, go out and play, uh, you know, do what you have to do with it. Cause there's never any tactical thing. It's all sheer uh, individual brilliance. It's all grinding one, nothing wins. It's been the story of his career, but you can't lose like this and then say, okay, it's okay. You can, you can still have your job. He's going to have to resign. They're going to force him out. There's no other way. And I love the fucking guy. I would now, say do, do, do you think that, do you think that's what's happening? And, and I know that there, there are a lot of politics that come into this because they, they have, uh, publicly said that they're not gonna force him, that they're not gonna sack him. But I, I can, I can get on with Mario's train of thought for a second because sometimes that's just what you say in public to try and save somebody's dignity. So they're gonna say yeah. in public, no, 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 we stand by him. But then in private, they're like, dude, we're we're gonna make you go away. Uh, we're gonna save your dignity. We're gonna make it look like it was your idea. We're gonna pay you off. You know, I'm sure there'd be a financial settlement. There'd be some wages that they'd have to pay him for that but it, it wouldn't surprise me and it's one of these things and, and jerry I'll, I'll bring you back in this one and i know that uh roberto mancini is your your long lost uncle so uh, i know that this is this is going to hurt you personally if it were to go down but i, I don't know what, what do you think do you think he's going to remain with the italian national team or do you think he's going to move on i i personally think that they want him to stay even though they didn't make it i think that winning a euro gives you some um security it's not like he did nothing in two or three years. Like it was a complete wife's job. You know what I mean? Like they bring him in to qualify. Yeah, I know, but yeah. Again, he's contract till twenty twenty six, and they want him to stay for the Euro. I don't think he wants to stay. I I, yeah, I, I don't think he would have wanted to stay even if they had gotten yeah. to the World Cup. That he yeah. would have left after that. So yeah, to, to me, to me, it's like it's pointless because if you're not going to be around long enough to even rebuild it. Just, just go somewhere else. And like, and I hate it because Jerry, like apparently, you know, some of the chatter is that if he leaves, Fabio Cannavaro would be the top choice there. And I, I don't, I don't know if he's any better. <laughs> like, you know, here, here, I don't even know who's coaching. Who, here's the thing. If you put a guy like Stefano Pioli in, okay. I don't, I don't have anything wrong with it because these are young coaches that will give you a new brand of football, a new ideas, fresh. You, you go with like, these older guys like nothing's um, fresh, nothing's yeah, fresh anymore. Yeah, but they're 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 yeah, but they're different. They're they're coming up and, and will have a different kind of. I I for it's one, recycled. I don't know. I like I would like Deserby to take over if, if he wasn't uh, coaching. I think he'd Deserby. be great if, if he was willing to do it. He'd be great because I know not everybody wants to coach the national team, but I would take Deserby for sure. Younger guy, fresh ideas. I would take it. I think that. Coaching the Italian team when you're younger is a much better course for yourself because it, it it's it's something you want to enjoy doing, but it's not something you want to do long term. So as, as a young coach, it's a good way to develop yourself and kind of establish your resume and, and get an, an idea of how to manage bigger players, right? Um Another manager who's older and, and would be vice versa. I also would like is Claudio Ranieri. I'm an, I like I'm a big fan of him. I like what he's done with Santoria. I like what he did with Roma. Um, I, I, a guy who comes in to coach Italy is not there to build something for the next eight years with his time there. Right. He's a short-term guy who is looking to get short-term results immediately. And Ranieri's always been that guy where he can come in, fix it, and it's good for a couple of years, and then he has to go. That's always been a Ranieri thing. And, and I think that he's a very people's coach where he gets along with a lot of the players. And for I, sure. think, I think that that's really key. So he has a lot of respect from the players himself, like the way he coaches. So – he would be another a, a prime candidate for me if if they were looking to replace Mancini. Again, I don't know how much Fabio Cannavaro has even coached in his in his time. Like I don't he's, even know. Who he's, he's coached. Still. I think the he's coached the China national team, I believe. Oh wow! Not not, not that that's in any way uh, comparable. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull up his resume here. I I, I I'm okay with a guy like Pioli going in because 
he he's not bad, and and I think that these guys, you, you want a young coach. They 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 they're more risk taking. They they don't live. They don't coach like twenty years ago. Very safe and like all the same. It, it, you need something new. But again, I think when you look at the options of who is going to replace him. You also have to say, are they an upgrade over Mancini as well? Right. Like that that's another thing. Regardless of what he's been able to do, are, are these guys even an, a step above that can not cl- make that clear path or that identity for Italy? Because Mancini has done that already. I think it's more of can a guy come in and and kind of sustain and, and continue that path and, and just kind of elevate it now to another level you don't want it to go a step back so um yeah i guess by by the way yeah i was i was about to pull that one up i i would love i'm i haven't even seen his name mentioned like in any of the rumors like the buzz from italy but if gasperini wanted the job in italy i i would welcome him with open arms and i know jerry and i are not big fans of him personally (laughs) maybe mario feels the same way but i respect the hell out of the guy as a coach He's a good coach, um, but I don't know. Uh, it, I, it's a toss-up. Like anybody can do any kind of job at this point. We've seen players, we've seen managers have the best of jobs, like Mancini, and then he crashes out in, in, in the World Cup, where that's the main focus. The Euro is great; it's a success. Don't get me wrong, but you're playing for a World Cup at the end of the day. You're not playing to 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 win a Euro. Although it's nice, but you know, the objective should be the World Cup. By the way, we, we got brothers of the world in the house now. He he he's he's our buddy from uh from an intergroup chat. I, is it Ian or Jan? I want to make sure I pronounce Ian. it correctly. Yeah, it's Ian. Ian. Yeah. 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 Well, well, welcome it's in, both. sir. <laughs> it, it, it's it's it, it's nice to actually put it put a face to the tweets. And so yeah, bro, <laughs> we were just we were and, and before we get into the actual players on the pitch, we were talking a little bit about Roberto Mancini because obviously there there was more than just coaching that went wrong uh, in that that loss to North Macedonia. But as far as as far as Mancini goes, do you think this is the end of the road uh, for him with Italy? Because I believe it is. I think it may be best for a mutual parting of the ways. What do you think? I wouldn't think it's the end of the world for Mancini. I think it's the end of the world uh, end of the road for some players, like maybe. A certain striker, a certain left winger, you know, they just don't seem to perform. As part of Macedonian, I am more than welcome to help them in their farewell party, in their retirement party, you know. <laughs> but um, I think it's a it's a personal problem, uh, meaning the players, not certainly the management, because Italy created lots of chances. They had Macedonia on the strings for the whole match. In the end of the day, it was poor finishing and decision making from certain players that really. Um, they really made the difference. Yeah, of course you can blame it on Mancini for choosing those players, but like you know, they're they're proven quality. They have years of experience under them, their belt, and you know, sometimes it's just just not meant to be. Well, and and this is where I want to go back to uh, to Jerry on this one uh, because clearly, despite despite the resume that some of these forwards have at the club level, there just there have been issues. <laughs> finding the back of the net and like Cheeto, he, he's already announced he's uh, he's retiring from international competition. So, Good. So, Good. <laughs> so, oh, so, 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 so whether people like it or not, like he, he is making way for the next generation. Uh, and listen, over the years, th- this is not anything new. Like outside of uh, some really good stretches from guys like Balotelli, like Italy for, for most of my life, like they've had problems finding clinical strikers to put on, the national team sure like this is not this is not a new issue here so uh do you think jerry that like the next generation where we're talking about guys like skamaka who unfortunately was injured the other day he could have been helpful but people like skamaka and raspadori do you think that they can actually usher in like a better generation uh, of clinical italian strikers or are we going to be in this rut for years to come with last time skamaka had a full productive season when? When? Tell me. Someone. Tell me the fuck when he had a full productive season. Raspadori. Tell me when he's put a full productive season yeah. together. And I gotta hear fucking Chiro Immobile is shit. He's this. He's that. At the end of the day. Shit. Yeah. Okay. I fucking hate you, man. I hate you all. You know what? I hate you all. I, You're gonna I, get I, uninvited I, from the I, show oh real God. quick. I, 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 I'm gonna quit, man. Football. I'm always gonna. I'm, I'm never gonna disagree that he didn't 
score enough. Absolutely. But he let's think about it. he's a system player who plays in a certain system, okay? He doesn't fit in, in the Italy system. He doesn't fit in the Italy yeah. system. At That's... the end of the day, we we not one time did they ever alter to try to play to his skills, okay? Never. Never. At the end of the day, we never altered from what I've been watching under Mancini. It's always been the same thing every game, the, the same style of play where no one passes the ball in behind the defense. No one makes a long pass in behind the defense. We we grab the ball. You think there's going to be a pass. We move forward. We clog the final third like we did on Thursday. And what happens to Cheeto? He's lost. He's lost. He doesn't know what to do after. When we when we advance the ball to the final third and we're all spreading, you watch him. He looks like a lost puppy where he doesn't know that. I'll agree. He looks like shit. Because he's he's playing in a role now that he just doesn't know or is used to. Like every chance that he got on Thursday was because it kind of worked the way he plays. Like Verratti made a long pass in behind the defense and he should have done better. I absolutely agree. Um in the first half, he got a long pass from Jorginho and got in behind the defense and had a chance. Those are the chances. And I'll say the last thing is that didn't help him is that Berardi and Insigne are the most fucking selfish players I have ever watched on Italy, okay? They are motherfucking selfish bastards. Like, are you kidding me? You're shooting... If you're going to go for an open net, you better score that. Because if that was Cheeto, yeah. his head would have been, would have been on, a, on a pole, okay? Yeah. He, he missed that chance. All he had to do was pass it to Immobile, and Immobile scores. I don't care what anybody says. I will put my... My life on that, he scores because no one's around him. And that's a, that's a striker's touch right there. He, that he, he That's a prime position he's in. Like, all he has to do is just shoot it, and he scores. The second was in the half, in the second half where he rifles it past the, the goalkeeper. I'm happy that Berardi's taking chances, absolutely. But, again, Immobile is in the middle, and he's wide open. And, and, and Insigne on the right side could have crossed the ball into the box a few times where Immobile is making the run in the middle. No pass. Uh, I, I'm 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 just mad that he has two players that just never cross him a ball or a pass, and it's the same thing every game. Every game is the same thing where Insigne and Berardi never pass because they just they, they think to score as well. So at the end of the day, it's a system that doesn't work for Immobile. Everyone's gonna say, "Thank God, Immobile is gone." We don't have to deal with him anymore. Okay, that's fine. Who's going to score still? We, we're we still in the same situation for the next World Cup. We're still yeah. in the situation for the next Euro. Tell me, who will you get? Put Zaniolo as a number nine? Because he'll, he'll never be healthy I, I, ever I, again, that kid. I don't want to be rude about the guy, but he's he lost. Sucks. No, don't. No, I'm, I'm he's, not, ta- he's talented. He's like, talented, he's very man. talented. He's, he blew he can't, his knees he can't, out, man. He, and he's too much. He can't stay on the pitch. And he's also, he's a little bit of a hothead, too. He's too much of a hothead. Yeah. Yo, tell me if you tore both your freaking knees, ACL and MCL, how would you be walking right now, man? Like, I'd be in a wheelchair. I would retire. Come on. Yeah. I, I already Come told on, myself man. if I tear my ACL once, I'm retiring. Like, you're I'm not your soccer. It's like a car going into three accidents, and you're still driving it, but you think it's going to be the same. And, and you don't and repair by the way, it. Yeah, yeah. That's and, what I'm and, saying. And, That's my point. And I, I had forgotten about this until, till uh, I, I don't even know how to say the name of this person in the chat, but I totally forgot about this. They, they have to play another game. Like, right, Tur- Turkey and Italy, the two losers of the semifinals. It's like just, just let them go home. <laughs> you're really going to make them play each other, like. You know, you know, it, it, Turkey. I guess they weren't supposed to win their game against Portugal. For Italy, it's a massive disappointment. Turkey doesn't want to be there. Italy don't want to be there. It's like you really have to make them play each other. But well, what do you think, Eon? Do you think that who left? Uh, By the way, who, who Oli? What six players left? Who who are these six players? Who are those six players that left the squad? That's I don't know. I, I like guess know. they they must have left early to to join to rejoin their clubs, which I would do. I mean, if if I was a player on that team, like, what am I going to waste my fucking time playing on Tuesday for? I want to get back to my club. I, everybody should leave. They should just pull up a bunch of uh, pull up the youth. No, team, but like, if they're the injured. That's, that, I'm just Forfeit. saying. Yeah. Corner, I want to know who is injured, though. I'm, I'm curious to know who is injured. Well, yeah, but he's also asking, like, are they really injured? Or is it like, oh, hey, I'm a little sore. I got to I gotta go home. I can't play. I don't know if these are legit inju- injuries or what. Oh. <laughs> but what, what do you... I know, like, players like Locatelli were, were injured. True, um, true. I know some of them had 
positives with COVID, I, th I think. So I don't know, maybe it was uh, that, maybe a false positive for them. But some of them have picked up knocks or injuries, so might have been that. I hope yeah. the whole team gets COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, done with them. They all suck. <laughs> I, want, I want 18 new players. I want a new technical team. I want a new staff. I want everybody out. I don't even care. How many? Yeah. I don't care if they're the best goal scorer. I don't care if the best midfield Italy's ever had. I don't care if you've missed seven penalties in your career, like freaking Jorginho has. Everybody out. Don't care. Never play again. Retire from the national team. Done. By the way, I love, I love, I love, I love Hamza, and I love his support. But do any of you guys agree with it? Because I don't. He said Berardi actually had a good game, but that miss. I don't know. He, when you miss that many shots, because he missed a big handful of opportunities. Obviously, the worst one was the open net, but he missed so many shots. Like I, I yeah. can't say he had a good game. Like maybe his movement was good, but his finishing was so poor. I can't say it was a good game. Did Did uh, Belotti play? No, he was injured. No, that's why we lost. Oh God, here we <laughs> go. Oh, these fucks. <laughs> he would have done less than Cheeto. I'm, I'm a fuck you, kid. He would have scored for the home fans. <laughs> yeah, in your fucking Guarantee asshole. Guarantee it. Go Throwing guarantees yourself. left and right. Go suck a dick. You <laughs> Guaranteed dick sucker. Yeah. I don't know if you guys talked about it already, but apparently uh, Mancini requested that the game be played in, in the southern part of Italy just because it supposedly brings him good luck. And for them to go crash and, out, uh, crash and burn like this. It's oh, just, wow. I oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, yeah, I would have thought maybe he'd. I thought maybe he'd want it to be played in the south so that uh, Donnarumma doesn't get booed. Because like anywhere in the <laughs> north, the Milan fans would go and boo him. Then help in the end, did it? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's a great point. I didn't realize that. Well, what do you think, by the way, uh, Ian, about uh, uh, because you know you have rooting interest in North Macedonia. Do you, do you think they have? Obviously, the odds would say no, but do you think they have a shot against Portugal? Uh, it's played in Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's very much doubted. <laughs> I mean, realistically, Macedonia should not have won against Italy in a million years. Um, in a billion years. <laughs> it was a fluke win, if you ask me, if you ask anyone else. Like, they showed heart and passion. But to replicate it twice and against Portugal, it would be a fairy tale. Um, journey to the World Cup, you know. It's only a shame that Goran Pantev retires from international football. He was part of this. That would have made it even better, but it is what it is. The, the, the new guys can, can try to unlock. He's an idiot, man. He should have retired after this. He should have <laughs> waited until this year, yeah. the world, until the qualifiers were done. Then you retire. Yeah. At least um, he's still playing, right? If, if they get, if they do, if they do get into the World Cup, if they do get in, uh, do you think he unretires so he can play in a World Cup? He's got to, right? So I if I was him, I'd just be lucky to be part of it, you know. But yeah. at the end, it's his decision. I think he's just focused on the club career now because he's still yeah. playing, like in Genoa or something like that. Isn't yeah, he, he yeah. is playing for Parma. Oh, is he in Parma, Parma now? He'll be oh, playing until he's hundred. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he plays in Parma. <laughs> Um, yes. I'd love to stay on, but I actually have to go back to work. That's um, yeah. You're actually working. You're being productive. So yeah, yeah. Go, go back to it. But it, it's Double it's work. so nice, so nice seeing you. <laughs> nice seeing you. Um, can I do a quick little plug? Please do. Yeah, because you guys at, do a great at job. Brothers of, at Brothers of the World on Twitter at botwpod. So check us out. Enter content. Enter um, podcast. Would love to have you two guys back anytime soon. Um, and yeah, with that being said, cheers. Take care. Cheers, man. Fuck Cheers. football. So, after this. <laughs> so what are you going to be, Jerry? You going to be focusing on hockey or are your Oilers any good? If you want to be a Florida Panthers fan, I will invite you with open arms. Yeah, you want to you you make that jump? You can lick my right nut, fucking Florida Panthers. Do I look like a fucking? They're, they're the only American year. team, the only American team I'll ever cheer for, is the Dallas the Cowboys. Rangers. The Dallas Cowboys. What? Because there's what? no Canadian team in the NFL. America's team. America's team, America. You're not far from Buffalo, though. You could you could drive to Buffalo from where you live. Buffalo right? is a good team to support. No, it's like they're right leaves. in line with Lazio, always letting you down. <laughs> Either Dude. never good enough or not good enough. They're always not good enough. So you got that, Jerry. And also, like, listen, I I hate the Bills, so I'm not I'm not saying like to root for the Bills because I well, like I them. The I'm, I'm I'm a Dolphin fan. I despise the Bills, but I'm saying like you could you could go to their games. Like you can drive. It's right across the border. You could go to their games. Why not? Have you been to Buffalo? It's like no, five, I never will. Population five. 
population like five. I remember I remember on a Friday night we went to watch Leafs versus Buffalo and the downtown streets was like one car every half hour driving by. Man. It was so bad. I was like this. We is- don't even claim Buffalo is part of New York. Oh yeah, that's right. Buffalo, New York. We don't even claim it. <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's so- Long Island, Queens, Miss City, Brooklyn, Westchester. After that, it's another country. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh no, no, no Buffalo for me, but yeah, Lazio still has a chance for fifth place, so I'll, I'll still be watching that. But um, <laughs> what a joy! Yeah. What a joy! What a joy. Eh? It's the most defeatist joy. thing. They still have a chance for fifth place. That's the saddest thing I heard in a long time. Oh, we still have a chance for fifth place. <laughs> Not even we have a chance to make Champions League. We could push for the Scudetto. We could push for yeah. third place. It's, Oh, we still have a chance for fifth place. Chance for fifth place. <laughs> we'll well, listen, Mario, with the way it's going with Inter, we may start fighting them for fifth place pretty soon with the way things are going. We will be. I don't know what's worse, my, uh, Inzaghi bottling the league like this or Mancini bottling the World Cup. Still Mancini, but I will say that watching Italy bottle so many second. chances. I mean, Italy, Italy had second. 32 shot attempts and couldn't finish anything. I felt like I was watching Inter. Like I felt like I was watching players. Inter. It, like at the end of the day, we can blame Mancini all we want. We, but I mean, it's on him. He has to take most of the responsibility. The players right. didn't get it done. Mancini puts you in the position to get thirty-two chances. Exactly. You have thirty-two chances to score. Immobile, Berardi, Insigne, whoever else was shooting, they suck. That they can't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't watch the highlights. I didn't watch the games. I'm basing it all off Twitter and what you guys mm-hmm, have said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The team sucks. It's flat out. Like, they won great, but when it comes to you, – you can't miss 30 chances. I don't care how, right. how much you play like Barcelona. Capello said it. He's like, this team looked like Barcelona, but they suck. They're not, they're not Barcelona. There's no physicality. There's no care. There's no, there's no trying to get in behind. He's, he's, he just ripped them apart. He's like, this team played just to, you know, play side to side. They went from – East to west, not north to south. Like yeah. that's how you win games. You go north to south. You gotta go on goal. You gotta shoot. You gotta score. You gotta score at the end of the fucking day. I don't care. Like it pisses me off because I, I like to watch strikers and how they move, how they do things. And immobile systematic striker. I respect the hell out of him on, mm-hmm. on a good day. You know, yeah. on like a normal day. But when you're not scoring and you, you say, Oh, it's the system, it's the system. Okay, well, then it's partially him. And it's on Mancini because Mancini has to find a striker that is going to fit the system. And if he has no strikers, he's going to throw Immobile. And he's honestly the best option. The problem is it doesn't work. It's not a marriage between the system and Immobile. So, like, yeah, I talk shit just because Jerry's here. But, I mean, maybe Skamaka is not a good striker. Maybe Rasparo is unproven, whatever. But... yeah. How many times have we seen a nobody fit into the system and like, wow, this guy's really freaking good? Th- think about Con- think about Conte's national team. I mean, it was it, it was yeah. it was a bunch it was a bunch of misfits, but they were able to play his style. Exactly, that's what it is. Lukaku. Everyone thought, oh, why are we bring Lukaku? He has a brick feet. This that systematic striker goes in, scores thirty goals, and makes the team better. Maybe Balotelli could have done that. Maybe. Skamaka, maybe Raspadori, maybe Qualiera, who the hell knows? You could have literally thrown names. Mm -hmm. But Mancini, like I said, most of the blame because he couldn't find that striker. He just said, this is my best 11 players, go out and play. That's yeah. The problem. And again, like they, they obviously, they, they didn't have every impact player from the Euros, no Chiesa, no Spinazzola. And I was, I was, I was having matter. a, com- I, I, and I'm, I'm getting to that. Believe me, I'm getting to that. Yeah. Cause I, I was, I was All having right. a conversation. No, no, you're good. I was having a conversation about it. I was on the phone with my sister earlier and she's like a very casual, you know, uh Calcio fan. And she was like, what, she didn't watch the game. She was like, what happened to Italy? Like how, how did they win the Euros? And then eight months later, they can't get into a World Cup. And she was like, and she asked me, like, are, were, were the same players from the Euro there? And I'm like, well, no, there are a couple of important players injured. But then at the end of it, I said, that shouldn't, that's no excuse to get knocked out by North Macedonia. It's no excuse to drop as many points as they had in the previous qualifying games where, you know, they've just been drawing with everybody, right? And it's, there, there's no excuse for any of that. No matter how many important players you're missing, you still need to be better. Than losing one nil to North Macedonia, 
uh, in Palermo, no less. So there's there's really no excuse for that. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I'm embarrassed across the line because I talked them up so much. It sucks because there's not even a South Macedonia if you think about it. <laughs> it's Greece, but well, that's for another conversation. Jerry, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be completely Debbie Downer on uh, on everything from that game. Even though I know it's hard not to be, but the, the as for players who stood out in a positive way, I only really saw a couple. Uh, Verati was very good, uh, so uh, he he I thought was uh, was man of the match. Uh, I thought Bastoni was good at the back. Outside of that, no one really stood out to me in a positive way. What did you think? Uh, Verati was the best. Uh was the best player on, on Thursday. He really was dominant in that midfield, winning challenges. I, I was impressed when he was, like, on the floor and he kind of, like, won the challenge out of position and didn't concede a foul. Um, I thought that Ferrati was our best player overall. Um, I didn't think Jorginho was bad in that game. I didn't see anything bad from him. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't poor. Like, it, it wasn't... I think those two players specifically didn't like disappoint me personally. From what I watched, per again, people might think differently about. I know the Jorginho rating got uh, online, but these ratings are stupid, anyways. But um, they're good for bantering. That's all they're good for. Uh, where is it actually? Uh, he got a, a seven, basically, which is not bad. So I wasn't well, I impressed. It's bad. Yeah, it's not bad actually. You're right. Um, Usually, unless uh, you get like fives and sixes across the board at best. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought Verratti and Jorginho were good in the midfield. Um, I didn't think there was any issues with him. I thought Barella should never have started in the first place. He, he looked gassed. He did not look good. He looked. Yeah, I, I think it, I think Inzaghi ruined him. I don't know what happened because yeah. Conte's Barella, one of the best midfielders in the world. Inzaghi's Barella, not so much. He was bad, man. So bad. I I didn't like him either. Um. And, and no disrespect to Inter fans, a lot of them will, will come after Immobile, but none of them will come after Barella because it's their own player. So at the end of the day, fan bases are going to protect their own people, right? Right. And I hate that um, mentality, by the way, because like j j just because like I I'm a homer as well. I love Inter. And it's one thing like to love to love players who play for your club uh, is one thing. But then if a player from your club shits the bed with the national team you have to be able to admit it like you have to be yeah. able to admit it like i i i can i can admit that since the euros but ella has been bad in an italy shirt just like Jer jerry and he has admitted it today jerry also admits that cheeto has been bad in the italy shirt but it's one thing it's like don't don't throw stones in a glass house you're right about that like if, if everybody's players are sucking in world cup qualification you don't need to go after one guy uh although cheeto was pretty bad jerry uh, Barella's included in my ban list. How yeah. I said all 18 players, yeah. I mean all 18 players. Maybe Verratti, because if he has a good game. You keep him around, please. He's yeah, good, you man. keep him around. He was good. But everybody else can fuck off. Yeah. Like, I thought that uh, – who else had a good game? Florenzi was really good on the right side. I thought he was our, yeah. I forget, he was pretty good. As actually. much as as much as, as Bastoni was really, was good too, I, I thought Pellegrini – sorry, uh, Florenzi was our best defender overall. I thought he was making good challenges. He saved freaking Mancini's ass in the first half from, from Italy going down one nothing because he turned over the ball. And I love how Roma fans didn't say nothing about that, but had to attack Immobile right away. Um straight up. Like Mancini did not look good. He looked like but really bad. I was not impressed with him. Um Bastoni was really good. I thought that his ability to get into the attack was was decent. Um, Emerson, he he's nothing to me. He's just meh. Wasn't bad, wasn't good. I just think he's just Sucks. mediocre. Mediocre. But um, yeah, I thought Florenzi proved why he should be in the team. And and, and that that kind of his his match can really go a long way to, to making an impression why he should be called up next time again. Because playing with Milan. And, and and I think that Pioli deserves a bit of credit, has really instilled some confidence into him, and the ba the base the basic of like just being able to play his game again because he had lost confidence with with Roma, and he goes to Milan now under 
Pioli and Pioli deserves a lot of credit with those Milan players because look at Giroud scoring right now. Um, Teo Hernandez, yeah, he sucks defensively, I'll be honest, but Mm -hmm. offensively, my God, the guy's got a gift. I I think that, I think, honestly, on a side note, I think Teo Hernandez would be better suited as a wing back. I really do believe that. I think he suits really perfect in Milan, sorry, with Inter in a 3 5 2. Mm -hmm. I think that he is a kind of wing back that he can really use. That guy can, he's like, he can transition. He's like, uh, what, what the hell's his name? That got, uh, that got hurt left back for Italy. Spinazzola? Yes, he's exactly yeah. like that kind of player. Yeah. yeah. Same exact thing for, for like value for value. They got pace, they go straight. Spinazzola was a converted left winger to a left back. That's right. So. See? And, and I see the last thing was that I would have preferred Balotelli up. I was looking at the 2014 World Cup squad, and some funny stats is that Immobile was the backup striker. To Balotelli, and I would have pre- I would have started Balotelli over Immobile actually, and roll the dice with something different. And and I don't think it's a risk taking. I think starting Jao Pedro is a big risk because he's never played in a in a in a qualifying game in his entire life. Right, like that was his first ever call up, big moment. He comes off the bench, difficult situation. Balotelli's been there. He understands how to score for the World Cup for Italy. Um, I think that's the only call a weird up. player too. I just I, I don't want to. I don't think he has any reason being there. Like well, you didn't earn any merit to be there all of a right. sudden. Like you didn't you didn't play in any of the games. Now I say, I know it's contradicting that Balotelli didn't do anything of that, but Balotelli has past history of playing on the top level. Like. He's played in the finals. Like, he's played in big games. So, for me... It's hard Ma- to mass, put a finger mass, on it. Yeah, let me just read this message no, from, I don't from think Mass. It, I, I don't Hold think on, think let, let, let me read it for the people who listen only to the audio. Uh, he says, uh, talking about Balotelli, he says, No, no, his time is long gone. I love Balotelli, but his time has long gone. He squandered his talent with attitude issues. Um, fair. He, I, I think that is fair, fair. But, but I, but I also I also were... think I also think that Italy were so desperate. I think to to shake things up at striker. I think it might it might have been worth the experiment. Like he he's right. Uh, and if you were in a better situation up top, you wouldn't even think about you know calling him up, using him, starting him. But I I think for Italy they may have might have been the right thing to think about it. When was the last time a striker scored for Italy? I, I can't even tell you. Balotelli, maybe. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Immobile in the group stages of the freaking Euros. Yeah, that's Wait, right. What? I honestly thought he was going to turn it around when he he had the first three games in the in the first two games in the World Cup group stage. He played very well. It was yeah. like he played very yeah. well. I don't care what anybody mm-hmm. says. Like he, mm-hmm. he, it was like they were playing around him, and he had this confidence. And then mm-hmm. after, it's like they changed it up and they threw him in a dumpster. I don't get it, man. And then I really don't to, get it. To your defense, the whole team looked like shit half the time. Yeah, when yep. when they changed yep. it up, Immobile was excellent. You're right, hundred mm-hmm. percent. And then they something switched. They completely played a different way. They were playing attacking through Immobile, exactly how you said it. But then all of a sudden, it turned to small sided play, which Mancini likes. All of a sudden, tried to do. He tried to become Pep Guardiola in the freaking knockout stages for absolutely no reason. Yeah. When they were killing, they killed Turkey. Turkey looked like North Macedonia, but sh- they should have been. Switzerland, they looked like North Mac- what Ma- North Macedonia should have been. Uh, the third game against Wales, he, I think he started to switch it up or whatever. And that's where I was like, okay, something's not right here. We, we're guaranteed qualification, I understand, but why are you going to change the whole system up and then go into knockout round? You're like, okay, well, this team started out flying. Now what's happened? They never got figured out because that was never the problem. It's not like what they were doing mm-hmm. wasn't working eventually into the last game. They just completely like, deaded playing through Immobile. So I don't even know what the hell happened there. 
All right, well, fellas, I, I got to run and do a little parenting. Uh, Jerry, if, if you have uh, any parting comments, sir, l l let me know. Because I and again, I just I want to emphasize to everybody, uh, you know, all, all three of us in here. Now, we did have uh, Ian on a little bit earlier who who's Macedonian. So he feels a little bit differently about this game. But I think I think the three of us are incredibly upset still uh, two days removed now. So, Jerry, any parting comments? Um. I just turned on the qualifying for Formula One. I completely forgot that it was on. And it looks like it's going to be a 1 2 Ferrari. Is that rain in Again. the background? What's that noise in the background? I, th I think it's rain on Mario's car. Yeah. Yeah, it's raining. It's just under raining. I got to go. What, what, what do you drive, by the way? Shit. It looks like pretty sweet interior. Dodge Caliber. Caliber. No, I got a Volkswagen Tiguan. Not bad. Oh, nice. And I got, it's got, I got a got big ass sunroof. That, yeah. Yeah, the, that thing is dope. Yeah. And I got a snowboard back here, so I got I got to put the seats down. Okay. Oh, I like it. I like it. Charles O'Clerk, mm -hmm. and it's going to be sign second. Yep, one, two, Ferrari. Oh, oh it's not done yet, actually. Oh, but it's thanks not a done lot. Yet. 13 seconds left in the qualifying, so it's the last lap. But, uh, yeah, go Oilers tonight. That's all I'm watching. Um, and then tomorrow I'll be at the Canada game versus Jamaica. Good for so you. Hopefully I'll be able to witness uh, history, you know, like, can you just imagine Canada in the World Cup and not Italy? I'm right, going so for I... Jamaica, by the way. I was just in Jamaica a month ago. Lovely country, very nice people. I'm I'm going for the reggae boys, Jerry. I'm sorry. Well, oh, <laughs> it's gonna be Perez first. He's motherfucker. He got... <laughs> Mario, what about you? Anything to promote? Yep. Uh, I got nothing. Into worldwide every now and then, you guys. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Mario Sweatshirt. I put some nonsense on there. Uh, I don't know. That's all I got. I Short and sweet. Oh, I wrote a piece about a Cherby. That's right. Oh, you did? Uh, we're yeah. here at uh, Laziali. Laziali. Yeah. Basically, how he's been able to win a Euro and, and he's gone through uh, a lot through his career and has bio adversity. So that's it. Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, make sure, by the way, you guys, you get the best ways to support this show, Calcio Connection. Uh, if you stop by and you're watching us on YouTube, uh, hit subscribe. Don't be a stranger, man. Don't just drive by, pop in and pop out. Subscribe to the channel. We don't we don't put out like enough stuff that you're going to be annoyed, like, like, oh, they're filling my YouTube page one or two episodes a week. So it's not going to annoy you too much so hit subscribe uh and this video hit the thumbs up button hit the like button that helps us grow as well thank you and uh, we do audio only as well uh, which i know is good for people driving you can listen to it through your bluetooth speakers and stuff apple Podcasts, spotify google just search calcho connection and leave us a five-star rating while you're there as well that helps us grow also so yeah for jerry and mario i'm alex we'll talk to you guys again next time on another episode of the calcho connection podcast ciao